Coming up in this video, I'm going to paint the new Goblin or Grot uh, Warband Zarbags Gits for Night Vault. Welcome back to Mini Junkie. My name's Jarrett. Uh, if this is your first time here and you're interested in the hobby of painting miniatures, consider subscribing and clicking the bell notification so you don't miss any videos. So I was I was into Shadespire for a while and I've got a few painted warbands for them, but I did not pick up Night Vault and I'm not sure why. And I still haven't. I'm, maybe I will at some point. Um, and I don't play as much lately these days. These days equals lately. But I couldn't really resist the new uh, Zarbags gets because, I mean, goblins and night goblins are just fun to paint and they're cool looking. And they're, I'm sure they're fun to play as well. But they are not fun to clean. And by that I mean clipping off the sprues and, and cleaning all the mold lines off with a with an exacto knife. There are a lot, at least I found, there were a lot of nasty mold lines on these and they often were in areas that were hard to reach with the knife and clean up. I think I, I got most of them. Uh, and if you're going to follow this tutorial, you do need to unfortunately do quite a good job of cleaning them all up and also filling any gaps you find uh, ideally probably with Vallejo uh, plastic putty the reason being uh, this technique uses a lot of inks a lot of glazes uh, and so any ink is going to really show a seam line that's still there or even a gap is probably going to show but particularly seam lines will not uh, be kind to you as you apply these inks. They're going to just show a dark line wherever you've applied it. But once they were cleaned up and I got to uh, painting them and, and experimenting and finding some cool techniques to really, I really wanted to, like there's nine of them and they're small and I wanted to make sure they had a lot of visual pop as I often say and really jump off the table at you. I wanted bright green skin. I stole the idea of like a sort of orangey brown cloak off a Facebook group as I often do because it looks great I just had to and I wanted to find a way to do it quickly and I'll show you how I did that but that's enough talk let's get to the painting table here's a look at the finished warband as you can see the colors are really bright and has a lot of pop to it I decided to use the Zenithal Prime for this and this is optional if you decide not to just do a white prime but I used a fairly medium to light gray primer first and then came at it from the top with white and here you can see what that looks like on the miniature I wanted a quick way to nail that sort of orangey brown look on their cloaks and their their clothing and I did that with a mix of three game inks skin wash brown and yellow and you can watch how many drops of each I'm putting into the palette well here this doesn't have to be super precise I would say though that the skin wash is quite orange so if you put more of that you're gonna get a more orangey look And once you have that mixed up just take a wash brush and apply it all over the top and bottom halves of their cloaks or their robes and just work quickly don't let it dry to create overlap lines um, be neat try not to get it on the skin areas anywhere that it, you go outside the line so to speak you're going to have trouble sort of correcting later because of the fact that this is inks and not uh, paints if you see any excessive pooling just wick it up with your brush I'm showing this on two models because it's one of the bigger and more important steps. Uh, and again, it, you can let this dry and do a second coat if you want even darker or richer looking uh, robes. You know, there's a lot of flexibility here. Just experiment with what you think looks best. If you like, you can test it out on a small piece of the robes on the back of one of the less important guys. You have to be kind of brave and trust the process with these inks as they go on. They look very wet. They look kind of blotchy and patchy and they'll even dry a bit shiny and we're going to come back with matte varnish later and fix that up but in the end you'll be happy with how it looks. Now I coat all the skin with ink tense yellow from scale 75 but you could also use Vallejo game ink yellow or if you don't have these inks you could even use uh, flash gets yellow just thin it down a little bit so it doesn't go on uh, sort of with brush strokes. The ink is pretty forgiving over the white uh, that we used for priming so um, you know don't be too worried about using it and the thing is you want to make sure you get every area of skin that's showing and try and get an even coat and make sure you cover all of it and don't leave any gray showing or any white showing on the faces it's okay if there's some in their mouths I wanted the squigs to be pretty vibrant uh, red in the end so I'm doing the same thing here and undercoating them uh, all the flesh area with the yellow I don't I avoided the mouth this time since it's very large and he has huge teeth we don't need the yellow on the teeth Next, it's a glaze of Vallejo sepia ink directly over top of any of the ropes. So the rope belts and the ropes holding on their quivers, and there's probably a, another rope here and there if you look around. Just check out every miniature. 
Now we're going to use Vallejo Game Ink Red on a lot of the mushroom tops or toadstools. So in particular, I did it on the one that the large one that the guy's wearing as a hat. And then I did the same thing on some of the smaller ones. Just pick random ones on the bases and things like that and, and do the red. If this dries too faint, go back with another coat. Next is Vallejo Game Ink Blue, and basically what I'm doing is taking some of the brighter colored inks and just doing a random assortment of the mushrooms with these colors. Someone mentioned they thought this blue didn't go so well with some of the greens and reds that I chose, so if you don't want to use this blue, you're... And here's where they're all going to turn green. As long as the yellow uh, ink on their flesh is dry, take your Vallejo Game Ink Green right out of the bottle and just wash it all over the, the yellow. Cover all the yellow and try to stay in the lines and try not to get the green on your robes that you finished already, etc. And don't be too worried about this. You don't have to be precise and neat. Just work somewhat quickly so it doesn't dry and create um, overlaps um, or tie lines. And try to, you know, wick up any heavy pooling you see like especially that'll happen in their hands and stuff so uh, but yeah just an even coat of the green and then the yellow is going to shine through like a highlight and it's going to look really vibrant here's a couple of examples of what they look like once it's dry another example of doing the mushroom tops this time with Vallejo Game Ink Violet so that's a purple and again just picking random wasn't too sure how to do the squig skin so I started out using um army painter red tone wash and it really created some nice dark shading but it didn't necessarily tint the skin as red as i wanted it to so we're going to come back later and fix that easy step here vallejo game ink black or you could even just use black paint we just go over their little booties some of them are bare feet but some of them are wearing these sort of cloth shoes and you just want them to be dark for contrast now fill in their mouths with Caroberg Crimson. Uh, you can just go right over top of the teeth, which we're going to paint later. Just, I mean, don't go overboard and completely fill it and flood it, but you want to have red as the back. To make those squigs redder, I took Vallejo Game Ink Red out of the pot and just brushed it all over the... And I avoid the underbelly because I want that to stay light colored yellow. But other than that, yeah, just all over the skin. The dark from the um, Army Painter tone will continue to show through. As we go, you'll notice I'm sometimes bringing back inks we used before because I was experimenting and just figuring out as I went which ink would work best. Here I've used sepia ink for the arrows and the arrow sh uh, the fletches and also on the wraps that they're holding the bows with, although that ended up kind of dark compared to the dark of the bow, so you may want to use a lighter color. That's up to you. And yeah, I think I mentioned before, but I did the gloves on this guy with the sepia ink as well. I think I missed a step with the actual bows. That would be sepia ink with like a little bit of black ink mixed in to make them dark. On that same guy, we're going to paint those hot coals up on his back with a yellow ink, or he could use uh, Flash Gets Yellow as well. Just want to give them a, a yellow undercoat. I used seraphim sepia on the quivers on their backs. I wanted it to be a light colored cloth for contrast. It ends up that this is really light, so if you want to let it dry between coats, you could do two or three to just bring the color out. For some parts of the wood on some of the models, I used Vallejo Game Ink Brown, so the little stick that's holding that mushroom over the hot coals, for example. You can use this wherever you like. You can also use any brown paint you like for some of these more basic steps, like the the handles of their staves or their, their pouches, etc. Minotaur Ghost Tint Plasma Fluid seemed like a good choice to create a bright bluish glow from the trapped, I think it's a fairy or a wisp. And we, we painted in sort of the recessed areas or, and leave some of the white showing, but we're also going to come back later with white and clean that up. So don't worry if it looks kind of messy to begin with. For any of the arrowheads that are actually mushrooms, I used Vallejo Game Ink Red. Gave it one or two coats. You can let it dry between coats if you want it to be a richer and darker red. And then uh, once those are dry, I come back with Caroberg, Cream <laughs> Caroberg Crimson to, especially on the ones in the quiver, just to give some definition to that and, and you know show each one. Wouldn't be one of my videos without a little Fugan Orange action. Uh, in this case, I use it to shade over those hot coals, which were, were currently yellow. To add a bit of color and shading to the net, I just use Seraphim Sepia out of the pot. In fact, I don't, in, in no cases, do I thin any of the shades or inks in the video, so I'll stop saying out of the pot. But anyway, I just gave that a quick uh, wash with Seraphim just to give it a bit of an off-white color. For the drink on the Fanatic, I used Violet, although that ends up drying looking like his purple tongue is sticking in the bottle, and same thing with Red. In the end, I believe I ended up using Blue uh, for the liquid. You can use whatever color you like. 
I often see people use red for the eyes, but I find that that kind of blends into the green is a little dark and on the box sometimes they have yellow eyes. So I used Flash Gets Yellow. I really wanted those eyes to pop out and be noticeable and just dot those in carefully, hold your breath, brace your fingers, etc. Uh, and that goes for the squigs. And then eventually I use that same yellow to create a nice bright eyeball on the two guys with big bulgy eyes, which is the fanatic and the leader. And while I had the flash gets yellow out, I painted some sort of hot spots on top of those coals, uh, just straight flash gets yellow, just to make them pop a little bit. Teeth on the goblins are painted Ushabti bone. This is, this is a single step because they are so tiny. They're basically as small as trying to paint the eyes, so you're going to have to work slowly, use the side of the tip of your brush sometimes, uh, turn the thing upside down if it's easier to get at the teeth, and just take your time and just uh, color them in. I figured the crazy eyeballs would have some red around the rims, so I took a blood letter glaze and just ran it right over the yellow bulgy eyeballs. Still had some leftover mushroom heads I needed to color, so I used Cassandora yellow, which is a neat sort of orangey yellow, and gave it a couple coats, I think, just to make the color rich enough. For any of the bones and skulls, I did it a little differently than I usually would. In this case, I took Agrax Earthshade and gave it, I think, probably two coats, uh, letting it dry between coats. So I wasn't going necessarily for the typical sort of Xandri dust highlighted, highlighted up to Shabti bone, and instead starting with something a little bit grayer. For the little details like the mushroom stalks and the little bumpy areas underneath some of the mushroom caps, I used Iron Rack Skin, which actually looks exactly like I would picture the mushroom stalks looking. You could very easily substitute a light gray or any light color you want there. One guy has a campfire. I went over those sticks with uh, Vallejo Game Inc. Brown. I base coated the leader staff with Doom Bowl Brown. Any of these steps where it's something fairly basic, like a staff or a bag, like I said, use any technique you're comfortable with. You could just switch up to regular paints like this. You could do a brown ink glaze. There's nothing special about these parts. Need to spend some time on the teeth of the squigs as they're a prominent feature, so I start out with a base coat of Xandri Dust. Once that's dry, come back and do a highlight using Ushabti Bone. Make sure it's thin enough so it's not going to leave, you know, thick, thick, <laughs> thick brush strokes on the teeth. I was going to do the bases with glazing, which is probably a bad idea. So to do that, I cleaned them up with Administratum Gray anywhere I've got ink on the base, which would create dark spots. Uh, you could even use Ultuan Gray. Coming back to bone and skulls, use some thinned pallid witch flesh from GW to highlight um, just light highlights on the skulls and the, the, bone, the ends of the bones and, and whatnot in the ridges. For the last part of the teeth, I use Screaming Skull, once again thinning it down a bit so we don't get uh, thick brush strokes showing, and just do more towards the tips of the teeth. Arguably, you could do this step before the teeth. I did it after, but I did the gums, what portion of the gums are showing in Screamer Pink first. And then optionally, I used Emperor's Children as a highlight to give them kind of pink, <laughs> healthy looking gums. You don't have to do this if yours have gingivitis. And then to pull it all together and create the right separation between the teeth, just a wash of Agrax Earthshade Gloss. And I'm using gloss because the regular Agrax Earthshade would darken the teeth too much. The bases aren't hugely um, you know, detailed. I took Vallejo uh, Dark Gray Wash and washed it all over, thinking I'd get this awesome dark gray shaded uh, effect. But this, these washes aren't the greatest. And when they dry, they actually create light colored rings around the rocks, which is the opposite of what a, a wash should be doing. So I had to go back a few times and do it. So I would almost just paint them, you know, paint it dark gray and do traditional dry brushing. I did apply that dark wash to the smoke and I was happy with how that ended up working. Highlight the staff of the leader. In my case, I used Scrag Brown. You can use whatever brown is appropriate for how you painted the staff. This should be the most unique step for you. 
coming back with the uh, pallid witch flesh from GW. We're going to paint in all the little bumps on the toadstools or mushroom caps. Um, several of them do have those bumps and also you can paint little white dots on maybe some of the red ones if you want to create some of that variety. Painted the cork on the bottle of the Fanatic with uh, XV88. Pouring step uh, dry brush with Dawnstone over the base, which is ideally a dark gray. In my case, it was 50-50, kind of a hit and miss. And then follow that up with a dry brush with even lighter gray, in my case, Administratum gray. Weirdly enough, it was the bases that give me the most headaches out of painting this, these nine detailed little guys. For the smoke at the top of the staff, a dry brush of Ulthuan Grey. And this is essential before we get to the metallics, we do a matte varnish. You can use a spray can varnish or whatever matte varnish you prefer. I tend to airbrush mine. And you'll see here how that takes all that shine off the inks we've been using and just makes everything look much more natural. Right about now I'm thinking, man, this is a long project, so I use Boiler Black as a dark color for the cauldrons. Uh, I thought that would be appropriate and then keep the weapons and armor a lighter metallic color. If you end up using something like Lead Belcher, then just for the weapons and armor, pick the next lightest color, so maybe that's a Rune Fang Steel. In my case, I used uh, Bolt Gun, which is like Lead Belcher. I did the weapons, uh, the armor on the one guy who has heavy armor and just do a straight up base coat. Like I said, I also used it on the weapons, like the scythe type hook weapon that the leader's carrying. I just a straight base coat with a gunmetal color. And you can paint any of the metallics with this color. You know, you can mix it up however you want. I also used this color to do the cage or the sort of lantern he's carrying that fairy wispy dude in. I used Negro Gold from Scale Color. I just felt like um, a rich, wealthy looking gold didn't seem appropriate for goblins. However, you can use any gold you have handy. Maybe it's Retributor Armor, something like that. It'll look fine. Or you can use Brass or Bronze. This is really down to preference. I used that color on the sort of one portion of the armor, like his back and his abdomen on the leader, or no, well, not the leader, the armored dude, and the top of his staff, and even all the little moons everywhere on the little, on the other guys, I did them with the gold. Here's a little step where we take some thinned white, and we go back to that little wisp, or fairy, I don't know what that thing is, and just kind of blend in, like feather in the white into that blue, so that, and, and paint the, paint the ball inside the cage with a bit of white to make sure that that looks like it's glowing just so that the blue doesn't look blotched on. At this point I realized that the two squigs had like moon um, like brands burned into their skin or cut into their skin. I used Screamer Pink to fill those in. You could also use Carolbert Crimson for example. I wanted some shading without dulling down the metallics so I gave all of the metallics a wash, like the silver colored, not the, not the gold, a wash of Null Oil Gloss which will create shading but not um, take away the sheen of the metals and that includes all over the ball and chain of the fanatic for the golds very similar a wash of agrax earth shade gloss this would be the color to use even if you went with like a brass or bronze color I've almost never used uh, Nurgle's rot from Citadel but one of the bases of the squigs has a little pool so I filled it in with that I wanted to make the warts on the squigs pop out a little bit, so I grabbed Wild Rider Red, which is almost an orange, and then once I had it, I did those warts, but also around the rim or the edge of the brand shape of the moon, and then in the end, I decided to brighten up their bottom lip, and what I should have done is applied it more like a texture, like little ticks, instead of one stro stroke. Highlighted the gold by adding some thrash metal scale 75 to the um, negro gold, but you can add a little like light silver metallic to your gold of choice. For all the metallics that I had washed with the Nuln oil, so all the sort of gunmetal colors, I highlight that with uh, mithril silver, which is an old color. You can use stormhose silver, for example. That would work fine. I included a lot of footage of me highlighting this silver. I don't know why, I don't think it's super complicated, but I wanted to show you how I also highlighted the ball of the Fanatic, mostly sort of highlighting the tops of the spikes and bumps on it. 
I also dry brushed the chain with that brighter color. We're almost there guys, so I took some thin down black to dot in the pupil of each of the bulgy eyeballs, the one on the fanatic and the one on the leader. And after that, we're done. If you're still with me, congrats. I know this was quite a bit longer than usual and I didn't even warn you to sit down and grab a snack for this video or a drink. And here they are. I'm really happy with how these turned out considering all the shortcuts and sort of speed painting type techniques I was using. I'm a fan of that really bright, almost radioactive green for goblin skin. It's not going to be everyone's favorite. But again, I like how these pop. I like how they're not just black robes, for example, like, like typical. And I think they'll look fantastic uh, on the Night Vault game board. Thanks for watching guys. Make sure to check out some of my other tutorials if you found this interesting. Uh, like, share, subscribe, the, the Holy Trinity. And we'll see you next time. Thanks again for watching.